whenever you want to actually start the show, Brian, feel free. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get to start it by doing the the thing. Yes, you do. <clears throat> That's the cue. That's the uh, that is the the impetus. All right. He's using big words, John. <laughs> the catalyst. The okay. This is well. I'm going to start with a high because I like high. <laughs> Hi, this is, <laughs> I'm not going to do it without laughing now. Yeah. Hi, this is Brian Ibbett from The Morning Hella Sackerville, and you're listening to Azeroth Roundtable. Nice. I would watch that show and, yeah. well, and listen to it too. <laughs> the Morning Bye. Hella Sackerville. I had to write that down so I make sure I got that. <laughs> it's a good way to fit everything in all in one place, throw <laughs> it, it all is. together. Yeah. Definitely. Welcome to Azeroth Roundtable, episode 101. My name is Ben Bumhoffer, and with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Good evening, Ben. I'm doing uh, quite well this evening. Um, happy to be recording. Happy it's the weekend. All of these things have converged to make me a very happy individual. Good. That's, you know, not exactly par for the course here, but good. You know, I'm, I'm charting new ground tonight. <laughs> Well, after um, what Ever Studio said on Twitter earlier in the week, I'm tempted to name the show John Smash no matter what. We'll get there. I figured. Because I know it's going to be John Almost Smash. Mm hmm. Yeah, we got a story coming. Yeah. Anyways, uh, with us this week is our friend from Raid and, well, elsewhere, uh, Brian Ibbett. Welcome, Brian. From Life. Hello, guys. How you guys doing? Well, John's doing great. He's happy. <laughs> good and you and how are you doing yeah, i'm doing okay okay, doing okay. <laughs> just way to bring it back down i mean i'm doing oh. awesome <laughs> so thank you very much for joining us this week we've uh, been wanting to get you on for a little while our schedules have been kind of you know up in the air about stuff but you're here so yay my pleasure yes my pleasure it's great to uh great to be here and talking uh all things azeroth well uh, most things azeroth and some stuff uh Outside Azeroth. Well, some things Azeroth, Azeroth, some things other. You know, it works. Exactly. Yes. So, Brian, what have you yes. been up to either in or out of WoW? Well, let's start with in WoW, because um, there's been some weird stuff going on on my account in WoW. Uh, things that I've never done or enjoyed before in uh, World of Warcraft, I am, I'm doing. So, with this patch... Well, actually, really, ever since we got the garrison, I started putting buildings in my garrison. There was always this one spot, right? There's always this one building plot that just sits there with an exclamation point over it uh, that I never never completed, never uh, uh, got built, and that's the menagerie. And uh, there's achievements associated with my garrison for getting a menagerie, getting all your buildings up to level 2 and level 3 and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And... Um, because I never did anything more than like the first two or three pet battle, uh, trainer pet battles, <laughs> I never completed any of that. So I never had uh, um, anything I needed to finish that. And certainly like the one time I decided, oh, well, let's see, I could probably beat the, uh, um, the pets that show up in my garrison. No, not a chance. Not with level five and six pets running around. Mm -hmm. So I decided on Thursday, because it was a snow day, and uh, it was kind of a day for me to to uh, split work and, and play. Uh, decided I would power level some battle pets, or actually go through the process of of going and getting some mechanical pets, then taking them out and battling them against, or using them to get the uh, um, the arcane eyes that float around uh, <laughs> um, Karazhan. And then you take the floating eyes, the arcane eyes, you take those guys over to Dragon Blight and use them to get some, uh, some hatchlings, some condor hatchlings. And then you take those guys <laughs> over to, uh, uh, what was it? It was like this whole big path of like, yeah, all you have to do is just get these pets and they'll get these pets and they'll get <laughs> these pets. And you're like increasing each time. Like, you know, your level five mechanical picks up a level 17, um, arcane eye and then your level 17 arcane eye picks up a level 22 uh condor hatchling or dragon scale hatchling or whatever they're called yeah and uh and then you know once you once you level those guys up or maybe you take them around and get a couple other things now you can take them back to your garrison beat the giant carrot and the uh 
I can't remember what else I had in there, but the giant <laughs> carrot's the thing that sticks out the most yeah. in my mind. And uh, and complete that and start building a freaking menagerie, which is I've finally done. I've got a menagerie now. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. And now I have all these pets running around my, um, <laughs> uh, all these things. And most of them are pets that I didn't do through the pet battling. They're pets that I got from buying the collector's edition of WoW or mm-hmm. the collector's edition of StarCraft or Diablo or whatever. So I've got all these level one like Mercablo and um, uh, the little miniature uh, little XT that I got from uh, Alduar and stuff like that. And so now it's like, well, now I can actually take some of those guys around and actually level them or take one of them, things to the stone you get for doing the menagerie and bring that guy all the way up to, um, to 25 instantly. Very cool. Now, you know you can actually choose which pets you want uh, walking around the garrison if you just set them as a favorite. It'll pull from that list oh. as opposed to all of them. Oh, I'd like all of them. I like making it look like a, a Disney cartoon in my in my garrison. <laughs> I just picture okay. your rogue walking around just singing and humming. And- <laughs> exactly. A little bluebird on my shoulder and, uh, you know, squirrels running around like Thumper. And uh, So the other thing I tried this week that I'd never done before, and it was, it was thanks to getting a uh, quest out of a Blingtron, was brawling. So you get this quest, I'm sure everybody's done it, where you get this quest that makes you go and do a, a battle against the Blingtron 3000 over in... Um, uh, in the arena in the Brawlers Guild. Mm-hmm. And, uh, boy, that's tough. I have done it maybe, attempted it maybe eight times, and I've not been able to complete it. Now, oh. let me see if I'm remembering that one correctly. That yeah. one is the one where you have the tiny little robots, and you have Correct. to create the lightning chain across the arena to... Right. Yeah, that one. Yeah, you got to get them down to one percent, and then they freeze wherever they're at, and you have to freeze them close enough that they make a chain. But you have to do all of this quickly enough because there's like a sixty-second enrage timer on the boss, and so you've got to do this really quickly so that um, when the boss is enraged, I mean the boss is just going to wipe you out. So yeah, you chain them all the way across, diagonally across to the Tesla coil in the corner, fire off the Tesla coil. And that weakens uh, the Blingtron 3000, and then you, um, and then that makes it so that you can damage him. Well, I've gotten him down to about a quarter life, and then fire rains down from the heavens, and I die. <laughs> yeah, that one is not an easy brawl. There are a few in there that are just a nightmare, and I did not like that one. There's another one uh, against a guy named Tython, or Tython, I believe. And it is a riff on Mike Tyson's punch out. You actually <laughs> go to the center and you have to dodge. They give you four directions you can dodge and you have to dodge at the right time based on what he's doing at you. And that gives you a bigger window where you can damage him. And if he hits you, it's an instant knockout. So oh, man. there's some really cool stuff in the in the Brawler's Guild. When I raced through all the ranks uh, right at the end of Siege of Orgrimmar, I had a lot of fun trying to get through some of those fights that's cool and there's heirlooms associated with that now right or, uh, I mean, there have been yeah there's a fist weapon i believe you can get in there um that is an heirloom i don't know if it's still in there but it definitely was last season Isn't they may have it too? back in there now cool yeah i think there's a ring or something as well i could be wrong it's been a while since i've actually looked at the vendor well, and I know they also took the heirlooms off the vendor for a while, but I don't know with the heirloom tab being back if those are back as well. True. Yeah, I've got exactly one heirloom <laughs> in, that, <laughs> in, that, in that big, empty, cavernous heirloom uh, uh, panel that you can pull up. It's like, scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, Hellscream's Razor. Good deal. <laughs> well, That's I sick. mean, yeah, but you've got your rogue and, uh, yeah. you know, you... You got it right the first time on class, so, you know, why worry about anything else? Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, And then so outside of Raid, um, the the big project this week that's been uh, taking up all my time, Tuesday uh, I received my Lego Shield Helicarrier. That is so uh, cool. Prayer that one. This thing came like the box is massive that this thing comes in. And you dump it out and it's like, you know, about 25 little plastic bags of, of pieces, all numbered, 1 through 12. And each, each set of bags takes about an hour to put together. It took me about an hour. Probably, you know, people who are uh, 
uh, who do Legos like constantly or, or build stuff with Lego constantly uh, goes a lot faster. But after eh, maybe a little less than 12 hours, I'd say probably closer to 10 hours, just got the thing completed tonight. And man, is it gorgeous. It is, that a is nice, so cool. Nice. Uh, yeah. Now you got to figure out where I'm going to put it. I have absolutely no idea. Just hang it from the ceiling, you know. Yeah, I was I'm sure say, it's not heavy at all. from the ceiling is a pretty good spot. I think I do need to hang it because that's about where I've got room. The, the uh, all the wall space, all the bookshelf space, all taken with other crap. So I think the ceiling is the new frontier. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool though because uh, as soon as I actually saw that uh, that one was announced, I'm like, oh. I don't know. <laughs> was that I, that was your exact reaction. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm yeah, a huge Lego fan as well. Um, last weekend, I actually just put together the uh, Star Destroyer, the the newer oh. one, and it, that took me maybe six to eight hours, somewhere in there. But oh yeah, uh, that's another huge one too. Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. But uh, it's yeah. it's one of those things that I kind of forgot since I had, I don't generally put large sets together all the time. Is how much mm. your thumbs hurt? Yeah, yeah, and my back because I'm kind of you're hunched yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're like, oh, all right, where's that little tiny one square, one peg, little mm-hmm. piece? Oh, no, no, not the silver one. I need the gray one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Anytime there's like weird pieces that are, I don't know, counterintuitive to, you know, just the normal bricks, I can yeah. never find them, even though they should just stand out as like, <laughs> what the hell is that thing? Right. Oh, yeah. They'll be upside down or they'll have other bricks inside them yeah. and they won't look exactly like they look in the book. Yeah, yeah. totally true. Yeah, when oh, did they start sure. um, separating the, the 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 flat spinny ones? You know, the like yeah. the the four pegs. Yeah. In in the starter story, they came separated. I've never seen them like that. Oh yeah, yeah. There were yeah there weren't any, there was nothing um, there was nothing put together like nothing assembled. Each individually plastic molded piece was separate from every other plastic molded piece. So even things like. You know, these two pieces that the only thing you could use them for is when they're pushed together <laughs> came separate. Came in two separate bags, as a matter of fact. So like, you had to hunt in one. Like all of the, like Black Widow's hair was in one bag and her head was in another bag. And, yeah. That's terrifying. That's not a party. Yeah, no, that's not a party. <laughs> uh, John, how about you? What have you been up to? So I, uh, I got excited about the patch. Like uh, I think a lot of us did, you know, new new content, regardless of how much that content may be, is uh, is always going to be exciting. And uh, I got in and I decided the first thing I was going to do was get all my heirlooms on the heirloom tab because I have a lot of heirlooms. Um, I'm the anti Brian when it comes to heirlooms. <laughs> I have a lot of them, so. I uh, I started logging into all my tunes because I couldn't remember who had all the heirlooms. I try to keep them on one character unless I've mailed them out to a character to be used. So I couldn't remember who currently had it because with the way the inventory's been, you know, it's been like, oh, I need to clean up this person's bag. I'll send all my heirlooms over to somebody else. Yeah. So I go through all my tunes. Uh, and by the time I was done, I had eight heirlooms which is significantly lower than the amount of heirlooms that I had. <laughs> right, like, you were probably thinking you had way more than that. Uh, I knew I had you way know you more had than, way that. More than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, uh, I sent a ticket into Blizzard customer service and said, hey, I don't know where my heirlooms are right now. Um, I, I looked through their item restoration system that they have. I didn't find anything on there. I tried. I thought, well, maybe I deleted the character that had it. So I tried to do the deleted character recovery. Nothing with that. So I'm thinking, man, I have no idea where these went. Send in a ticket to Blizzard. Uh, I wait, you know, like seven hours, and I get a response. And, uh, you know, they, they basically said... Hey, this is Game Master. I'm going to leave it out. Um, I was able to compile a <laughs> list of all your current heirloom pieces on your account. Uh, here's how it looks. Sent me a list of all my heirlooms. And sure enough, there they are. Uh, there's a ton of them. And uh, I'm thinking, great, there they are. And I'm reading the description of where they all are. And they all say they're in the mailbox of one of my alts. And I thought, man, this is kind of embarrassing. I forgot to check the mailboxes. All right, well... <laughs> Let me get on and see. So I stopped there. There was more to their message, but I stopped there, logged into the game, checked it out, and uh, 
there's no there's no mail. Uh, there's no heirlooms. That's such a bummer. So then, thinking, well, this is odd. I should probably read the rest of what the GM had to tell me. <laughs> uh, and so I pulled it up, and it ends as follows. Hopefully that shows up on your end, how I have it set up on this end. One thing to keep in mind is that any characters who have the item listed as male may not have that item available any longer, as this is usually what I see when a player mentions that they can't find specific heirlooms. Mm -hmm. What happens is that they were sent to another character but left in the mail for too long, and since the mail in the mailbox only lasts for so long, these pieces of mail with the gear attached were eventually purged. That's why you can't seem to find the ones you remember having. Hopefully this list clears that up for you, my friend. <laughs> and they marked the ticket resolved. I'm so glad that you had that like pulled up just to read it right now, too. I right. did. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I did not feel the issue was perhaps resolved at this point. <laughs> That's right. Really? Uh, you might say that I had additional questions maybe lingering in my mind and maybe expected additional services to potentially uh, occur. Um, so I ended up sending another ticket and uh, about 24 hours later, I got a, another response um, and I was really mad during this time. Yeah, I like, actually got a text from him. He was wondering, hey, Ben. <laughs> I need to know, am I legitimately mad, or am I just being John? <laughs> I started off annoyed. I was just like, man, now i got to put in another ticket. Like, just kind of annoyed. But then I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at how the new heirloom tab works, and I realize that we can just create as many heirlooms as we possibly want. I can make my dream of filling up an inventory with heirloom pants a reality, uh, if I had any left at this point. So... It, in a world where we can have as many copies of the heirloom as we want, and they clearly have a list of the heirlooms I should have, there's no reason why they shouldn't just give me those items. Mm -hmm. They know I have it. The game system would let me make 80 million copies of those if I wanted to. Like, There's really no restriction there that should prevent it. And it was when that occurred that I went from just kind of being a little annoyed to like, no, and now I'm sitting there and I'm talking to myself as if I can talk to that customer service agent and I'm having my own little monologue. I'm like, no, this is ridiculous. And that was when I called Ben and said, hey, uh, I'm, I think I'm mad and I need you to tell me if I have a right to be mad or not. Uh, he agreed with me well, that I had a, I had a valid you had reason. A, you to had a legitimate, yeah, legitimate reason to be mad. Well, sure. my yeah. first response, though, was let me finish before you get mad. <laughs> and I had to tell him that he was totally at fault for that. But, yeah, that's a case of not going above and beyond on the, the GM's part, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So uh, so 24 hours later, I got a, a new response um, from a GM. And uh, we'll just, it was... Hi, I'm Game Master. We'll leave that out as well. Thank you for contacting me today. Good news, I was able to restore those items for you. They should be in the mailbox now. Thank you and have an awesome day. The end. And I read that and I was like, that's all they needed to do. <laughs> so I didn't if they can pull out list. a list. Right, exactly. It's like, obviously so, you have it. Yeah. So I was a little, I was a little frustrated, but I logged on, I pulled everything out of my mailbox and instantly got the achievement that got me my heirloom mount as well because, like I said, I had a lot of heirlooms. Um, and so uh, I'm pretty excited about that because now I get to be chauffeured anywhere I want in the game. And <laughs> So how does that work? Is it like a flight point thing where you just basically tell it where you want to go and then it drives you there? No, it actually works exactly like any other mount would. You are driving it, except oh. on the model, your character's sitting in the sidecar, <laughs> and they have just an NPC driving the mount. Okay. So it's the way they explain for, like, because the idea is that your low-level, level one characters can <laughs> use this mount, but because they can't, in lore, ride a mount yet, they have to be driven around wherever they want to go. <laughs> it's so amazing. Yeah. I absolutely love mine as well. Huh. It it really is a cool idea for a man. I'm gonna have to find the easiest. Um, basically, I'm gonna do what I did with the power leveling the battle pets: <laughs> is find the easiest path to get enough heirlooms to get the uh, the mount. 
Well, let me well, ask you good this. Place Do you have a lot start, of money? Yeah, yeah get a lot, a lot of money, money yeah. and go to the Undercity. Look for the massive crowd of people. <laughs> uh, and in there is a vendor selling a whole bunch of heirloom items. Cool. Yep. How many do you need to get the amount? 35. Yeah. 35. All righty then. <laughs> but Brian, for you, 34. Four <laughs> ninety nine. <laughs> so, uh, well, th- so there that's... is another option. Do you have Dark Moon Fair tickets? Do I? Yes. I think I do, yeah. Then you might be able to get some that way as well because they also Ooh. sell them. Oh, okay, cool. Sweet. All right. That's okay. my next thing then. All right, good. We're getting you on board <laughs> for all, all this collecting stuff. I'm going to do everything but actually, like, you know, do dailies and do things that would benefit the raid team, right? And, like, you know, <laughs> get a uh, Pexus crystal so I can upgrade my uh, back piece and all that stuff. No, I'm going to go out and just get heirlooms and get the chopper. Good call. I, think that's the, I think that's the better way to go. Good deal. All right. Yeah. That seems like a rogue thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just role playing, Brian. You know, really like, is, yeah. help the raid team, help myself. Exactly. It is kind of a rogue thing, right? Yeah. 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 It's just role playing. That's what I, I do. My, I lend you my knife on Thursdays and Sundays. And <laughs> the rest of the time, it's time for me to fight with the arcane eyes. Woo! <laughs> and you're lucky you even get that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I also have been playing a lot of Diablo 3. Um, the new season started, and I thought I'm going to check this out. And for reasons that I don't totally understand uh, and probably had no control over, I decided to not only make a seasonal character, but I decided to make a hardcore seasonal character. <laughs> um, for those that don't know, in Diablo 3, if you choose a hardcore character, what that means is that when you die, that's it. One death, you lose the character, you lose everything you have, it's all gone. The best thing you get to do is create a memorial to the character saying, (laughs) this was once a thing I did. Uh, So I did that, and I got up to level 70, which is uh, max level. Uh, So I felt pretty good about that. I was going through my, uh, now I can't think of the word. Paragon? Yes, Paragon levels. I was I was earning those, going through that, um, and perhaps got a little greedy on my game difficulty. Uh, <laughs> I really wanted to get up to Torment level one. I was perhaps not ready for Torment level one, and uh, my Diablo three monk had a wonderful life. It is now over, um, but she will be remembered. In that tab that remembers heroes. <laughs> Is there like sad uh, music that plays anytime you click the the tab? You know what was shocking? Like, first of all, no, to answer your question. At least I don't think so. Um, but what was shocking is it didn't bother me that much. Like, the character died. I kind of knew it was coming. I got frozen right as they were doing laser beams and there were a million things around me. And I thought, <laughs> well, this is probably not going to turn out good. And it didn't. And when it happened, I was like, all right, that's done. I thought I'd be devastated, you know, put all this time and effort. and But I think because I hit max level, which was kind of the goal I was hoping for, and that was really what I wanted, um, I think I was kind of okay with the rest. I was like, yeah, this was all just bonus. So I'm going to start a new seasonal character. That will probably be the last time I do hardcore. Makes sense. Uh, I'm done being hardcore. I'm pure softcore Cinemax <laughs> John from now on. <laughs> Well, okay. Yeah, good, good to know, John. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, just thought I'd let you all know. That's, that's me. Um, in WoW, uh, actual WoW, not customer service WoW, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think we'll probably be talking a lot about what I did in WoW as we go through what came out with 6.1. So uh, I, will pass, I will pass it over to you, Ben. What have you been doing? Um, so... With 6.1, there's this new achievement called Raiding with Leashes 3. Mm-hmm. And on Battle Pets, Aludra and I are in a race to the finish for, you know, Raiding with Leashes 3. So I've gone through a lot of um, Hygel Summit, a lot of Black Temple, and a lot of uh, Sunwell. I'll be doing some more later tonight. <laughs> but I'm at uh, six of the 12 new pets. So actually 
pretty psyched about that. And uh, I really hope I win. That, that's uh, that, that's my big thing. I mean, I have a when, huge when lead. The competition ahead of between you and Aludra. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's it, we see we have these little mini competitions that spring up all throughout the year until like. Uh, last year it ended at BlizzCon and she was crowned the queen of battle pets because she won. Um, this year I, I've got a pretty good lead. I have I think 17 points and she's at about five. So Ooh, wow. I need to get that huge lead as best I can because everybody's going to be voting for her again sometime soon, giving her points and all this stuff. So I'm, I'm doing everything I possibly can. But we both found out that it's actually really easy to glitch the Hygel some. So you go through the first two bosses, then you ride up the road, you talk to Thrall, and then you wait for the first wave of uh, undead to come, and mm -hmm. they never show up. So then you're waiting, you're waiting, then wave two comes and you kill them, and you kill every single wave, except for the first one, because it never spawned. And then you fail the fight, and then everybody despawns, and then you wait like ten minutes, and then they, they pop up oh. again, and you talk to Thrall again, and then the undead finally come. So no idea what happens with that, but it 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 just happens. That that seems like a bunch of really random steps. Why did you go and talk to Thrall before you even needed to? No, I, you... I talked to Thrall when I needed to. Oh, to to start his wave of enemies. I, I thought you were talking about right at the beginning for like no. Jaina. I thought you were going and talk. I, I I didn't even know you could do that. No, nope, no. Nope. After the first two bosses, after you ride up the road. Okay. Yeah, it just. It didn't work. It was weird. Uh, she warned me about it. She said it happened on her warrior. I'm like, oh, that's weird. It didn't happen on me, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden I go in there on my monk and same thing happens. So I don't know if it's just melee classes or what, but um, mm. it, it glitches out. So watch out for that. And if you don't get that first wave, wait a while and then redo it and it'll work in theory. Oh, jeez. Yeah. But uh, other than that, uh, the, the three of us went to raid. So, yay. We all did. We all were there. Mm hmm. Yep, for the entire time. For the entire time. Except for John. But uh, <laughs> um, Sunday, we actually started going against uh, the second to last boss in High Mall and got our butts handed to us the entire time. Um, we were doing wow. better, but eh, it didn't work out too well. Um, it's a Korog, right? I think so. I never know their name yeah. at this point. It's like yeah. Ogres, and there's another one, <laughs> and then there's right. another one. So, yeah. And then the big leafy That's dude looks like Groot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then the mountain. Uh, that That's Tectus. I know that right. one just because. Yeah, right. Cool right. fight. Then that's a dog. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> anyways. The dog. We we always struggle with the dog boss. It's not really a question <laughs> of difficulty. It's a question of morality, really. That's yeah. right. Very true. Very true. Um, but uh, after about an hour or so, then we went to Black Rock Foundry because we heard that, you know, Gruel was really easy actually and we would have gotten him down if it wasn't for the 45 minutes of trash before him mm. yeah oh, that was horrible they so say the 45 minutes of trash before gruel is harder than gruel himself is it is it like the um the trash you face before the uh was it the the twin protectors or what was it when you get into orgrimmar and you've got all that trash oh, yeah. in um yeah, the Dark Shaman. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. It, yeah. It's not that there was a lot. It's just that, I don't know if we're just not exactly geared enough for it. But, mm. I mean, I think we wiped like three or four times because either we accidentally pulled an extra group or we just weren't CCing fast enough or something. But, I mean, it, it just took us forever to get down to go through and actually wipe out all the trash to get to Gruel before we can actually, you know, attempt oh, on them. Man. So, yeah, so not fun. But, um that doesn't sound fun. That sounds like a lot of wiping. Yeah, we're not doing that on Sunday. So, okay. <laughs> Tet and I talked about it, and not going to happen again. Well, I'm not doing it because I'm going to go see all this Costello up in Boulder. Oh, that's very cool. I'm going to miss Raid. There will I be significantly that's a less wiping there, probably. There will be. That's right. There will be <laughs> significantly less stealthing and uh, and face and floor tanking. Mm -hmm. Yep, and shadow stepping into unknown regions of the world. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Discovering stuff that uh, Blizzard customer service doesn't even know about. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, they know where you are, but they can't get you out of there. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah. We put in a ticket. They said, we know where Brian is. And then they said, <laughs> take it complete. 
now I got to do it. I got to take a selfie so that uh, I can prove <laughs> I was in this weird blue land. Actually, uh, Marconi you know did what? that earlier this week. He fell through the world at some point. I think it was in Black Rock Foundry. And uh-huh. he actually hit the ground, but there was blue all around him. Took a selfie. Boom. Mm. It's pretty good. There you go. See? I mean, same thing. Selfie cams answering life's big questions. What's beneath the world? <laughs> Where am I? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, that's enough about me. Let's go ahead and take a look at the news very quickly because there's not a whole bunch. News! So, (laughs) John, why are you smiling? Because I don't ever hear the bumpers. So, like, (laughs) it's the first time I've heard that probably in a year or two. And, (laughs) man, that's a dorky bumper. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hundred episodes worth, John. Hundred episodes. Man, our poor audience. I'm sorry. Continue, Ben. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys actually saw this today or not, uh, but Blizzard released a brand new mount for Recruit a Friend. Yay! I did see that. Yeah, it's, it's a fire-looking thing, right? Mm-hmm. Fire horse. Yep. Yeah. It. It's like well, uh, it says right there. It's the center main charger. <laughs> <laughs> Close Some enough. Sort it's of fine. fire horse, I guess. Fire horse. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it looks exactly like the the Hearthstone horse, you know, the blue one that you get for winning three matches, except it's red or orangish mm-hmm. or fiery or whatever. I have officially stopped caring about recruit a friend mounts because I have reached a point in my life where I am not going to recruit any friends. And I've already opened enough second accounts that I'm not going down that road anymore. <laughs> so, I've run out of friends. <laughs> I, I kind of wish Blizzard would just say, like, hey, give us 30 bucks for this and we'll give it to you. Which is too much for a mount, but it's what people eventually, inevitably, Mm -hmm. they will pay that by buying the expansion and -hmm. then paying for a month of WoW. They'll they'll pay that amount. So I wish they'd just say like, hey, give us some money and you can buy it. I I still don't think I'd get them, but... How long does somebody have to be out of the game um, in order for you to be able to pull them back with Recruit a Friend? Well, that's actually different. That was the um, Scroller Resurrection. That oh, was, uh, that's what that was. That's right. Okay, so that is a different thing. Yeah, this is uh, get a brand new person to play WoW with you. Damn. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah. easy anymore. No, not like cheap. Everybody has either played it or has made up their mind at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing I can say. Turns out saying, hey, I'll get a mount uh, doesn't get people <laughs> as excited as you might think. Well, the good news is, is that, um, you know, at least now they can get the starter edition for like five bucks cheap somewhere, then get Warlords, and then instantly they're at level 90. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you can convince someone to join. Maybe. Yeah. I doubt it. You get to skip like the whole game. <laughs> and then you can just sit in your garrison and play a Facebook game. But spend fifteen dollars a month for it. That's right. Yeah. And I get a mount. <laughs> just make sure you pay for two months. That's, That's why I'm not in sales. I'm, <laughs> I don't think anybody's buying into that. Yeah, very true. <laughs> All right, let's take. But a hey, seat. cool. You can get a Cinder Main Charger. Well, yeah, just not you. Right. Not me. Not you. Not me either. All right, let's take a seat at the round table. Shut it! Round table. Yes, John, that one sucks too. I think that's great. I love these bumpers. You're oh, yelling. And thank you. Someone likes it. It's just like raid night. You're yelling at us. <laughs> yeah, that did happen. Clear chat. Clear mumble. Guys, shut up. <laughs> all right, guys, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying no, last night. We, really didn't. Right <laughs> well, we didn't tell that story. <laughs> Go ahead. That might have been the funniest thing I've heard. It was really funny. Because everybody got real quiet afterwards because I think everybody was trying to figure out what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, so what happened is we, we downed the first boss of High Mall, um, Blade Fist. And we're just about to start fighting the trash just beyond the gate. And people are talking and having a good time. And all of a sudden, Ben jumps on and he's like, 
okay, guys, we're, we're going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, all the conversation and interest in what's going on just flat dies as everybody yeah. tries to figure out why Ben is motivating us forward. At this point. <laughs> We've successfully downed a boss. We're about to just go kill some trash and fight other bosses, get more loot. Come on, guys, we're going to keep going. <laughs> You can either collect what you've got from uh, Blade Fist, or you can press your luck and see if you can get some from the butcher. <laughs> it is a very millionaire esque kind of like. <laughs> All right, raid team, you, you want to stop here? down one boss. <laughs> now, is uh, that your final answer? <laughs> Did you want to go for the butcher? <laughs> yeah. So that happened last night. Um, no, it. What it was was it was like. I don't know, 9.30, 9.45. I'm like, we really need to get going, otherwise we're not going to do anything tonight. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, we got a slow start or a late start, I think, because we were trying to get the uh, everybody uh, get the Bracken Spore mm -hmm. uh, quest. And so we had to have people, you know, running around uh, trying to get that, you know, from other people's garrisons and things like that, so. And boy, was that a beneficial thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm really glad we spent all that time on that so that when everybody turned it in, we could hear everybody go, got an item, not an upgrade. Got an yep. item, not an upgrade. Got an <laughs> item, not an upgrade. Right. That was great. But, uh, you know, that falls in with our roundtable topic, which is uh, this week all about patch 6.1. Yeah. Yeah. A whole bunch of stuff changed, kind of, but not really, because... <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it's been brought up before that 6.1 isn't exactly a large patch. And um, we talked a little bit about it last week, but Brian, how excited were you for this patch? Well, I don't care about Twitter in game. I don't care about a selfie stick. Um, <laughs> the only, I mean, the reason, the thing that triggered me to do some pet battle stuff wasn't the, um, the new stone you get. Although that's nice. No, it was just, you know, just getting that, that one unfinished plot out, so that wasn't a that wasn't a six point one edition. I don't have a blood elf, uh, so that doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot to uh, to get me really excited about it, but um, I think it's all things that I might like eventually. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still don't know about the Twitter thing, but uh, um, once I start getting some heirlooms and getting that that mount, that I'm kind of excited about. Um, and then there's some new quests you get from the garrison that are, um, this should add some extra stuff to do. So it's not just log in, send all your missions, blah, 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 log out. <laughs> Pre pretty much. Yeah. Um, John, well, I know a little, little tease. Yeah. You had a little bit more invested into what was going to happen because you were so excited for new content. So what was happened? I? I, I mean, I, I think I knew going in there wasn't going to be a lot of new content. Um, I know, I was just hyping you up. I, thanks. Um, oh, okay. Pre drama. Guys, I was not excited about patch 6.1. I thought it was kind of a non patch. It kind of made me question what Blizzard is doing with their patches. Uh, and it came out, and I kind of like patch 6.1 a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah, I kind of think it's an awesome patch. Really? Th yeah, okay, I gotta say, this is actually really <laughs> surprising to me, because, I mean, you've you, you've poo-pooed other patches, like, so incredibly much based on how what was put in, you know, how it worked, and, um, you know, granted, a lot of the time, you've been, you know, very down on the beginning of patches, but sometimes very happy afterwards. So, what about this one makes it just so incredible for you? I, I, well, let's, okay, let's temper our expectations here this isn't a game defining patch by any means but i kind of like this patch because they put in it feels like they found a bucket they found a bunch of stuff at the bottom of the bucket <laughs> and said eh, and threw it at the game and now we can just deal with it wherever it has landed and it turns out that a lot of that crap they threw at the game is stuff i really like so you know I do play a Blood Elf, so my model looks better, which is nice. So that was cool and exciting, which made Transmog briefly exciting all over again <laughs> as I figured all that out. Um, 
the heirloom tab was an adventure in customer support and uh you know it got me excited about some of my alts i'm like oh man now i can do this it actually gave me an upgrade for my troll rogue because i got to just make a duplicate of the heirloom dagger so now boom got two of those um <laughs> the raiding with leashes achievement while i don't care about battle pets i love running old raids by myself it's one of my favorite things so getting to go in and have new rewards potentially drop, I think, is really cool. They added a jukebox to the game, and they put all over the world, you know, through every expansion, little places where you can buy them or they'll drop from bosses or you can find them sitting on the ground, these new music tracks. And I found out that Grizzly Hills is one of the music tracks you can set up in your garrison, which I think is the one of the best songs in the game. So... Uh, my garrison music now i'm happy when i'm in my garrison because i get to just hear that the whole time after like a uh, minute 50 yeah i mean there's a minute 50 where it's real shaky but then it gets <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it also you know i it made me go fight the lich king again because i was like well it would be cool to have invincible as a song that plays in my garrison and hey if he drops invincible when i kill him that'd be cool too right so I went and did that, um, and he dropped neither. Mm. So I'm going to do it again. Oh, it's a drop? Yeah. There's some that are drops. There's some that are guaranteed. It's, it's a whole you thing. It your money and you takes your chances. <clears throat> I'm worried uh, about getting this, uh, the jukebox in my garrison because I hear that uh, you automatically get U2's latest album as soon as you install <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Some people are not happy about that, though. Some people think uh, U2 is not great. <laughs> well, what other free, you know, uh, free music can I get? You know, do, do they have Aerosmith? Uh, Gates of Orgrimmar. Have you maybe heard of that track? <laughs> that one's pretty hot. Uh, Way of the Monk. I had that playing for a while. That's pretty hot. That's a good one. Yeah, that's in my uh, top five most played on iTunes. Um, <laughs> it's a real solid, solid track. Good beats in there. Um, I found out that if you get twenty songs. I think it's 20, might be more. You get a personal jukebox that you can, I guess, play wherever you go. That's oh, called wow. iTunes. It is called iTunes, Ben, <laughs> but you know what? Now it's all in-game, and it only plays WoW music, and it only plays a couple of tracks from WoW music. <laughs> so it's extremely limited, but you know what? Darn it, it's got charm and personality. It's like those and little uh, hip clips or whatever that the, you know was big 10 years ago where it's like just this little tiny almost mp3 player would put like a chip in there yeah it's exactly no one knows what i'm talking about no so in sync i don't know oh those those things that you just got like one out like one song (laughs) little plastic (laughs) i totally remember those stupid things it looks like like you should give it like like it would be a first grader's first music player (laughs) yeah right exactly (laughs) And then the music they selected for those things pretty much guaranteed that that's who it would be going. <laughs> exactly. Here you go. Here's Cher Believe. Enjoy it over and over and over again. But the Kid Bop version. <laughs> right. Exactly. <yeah. laughs> oh, Kid Bop. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so it's, it's stuff that is real random, real just kind of all over the place, but it has had me playing WoW more than I've been playing it lately. And I haven't been just going in and doing the garrison thing. Like, I've still been doing that, but I've actually been doing stuff in the game again. And I was ready to come on this episode and just be like, (laughs) man, what an awful patch. What is Blizzard thinking? Like, oh, it's barely a patch. But I'm playing the game more, so how can I really say that it's a failure? Like, yeah, the selfie thing is dumb, but it didn't prevent me from being totally excited when I got it. And yeah, I took some <laughs> stupid selfies. I did not post them to Twitter, but... Uh, but you could have if you I wanted could. to. I could. I have the yeah. option. Yeah. I have the technology now. Well, did you the actually power. link up with Twitter? I did. So I was like, I might need this one day. One day. <laughs> if I kill the time lost proto-Drake, that's going on Twitter. So, hey guys, we decided we're going to keep going. Slash, raid motivation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh. we downed one boss. We're going to keep going. It's really cool. <laughs> we're going to keep going, though. <laughs> <laughs> we're not stopping. 
Uh, yeah, I I really like the patch. Now you mentioned something in your earlier, uh, or you you said you were going to get something. You said garrison followers get all the right skills. Is there some new thing in the game about that affects your garrison followers? Oh, that's right. I did mention that in in my what I've been up to, and wow, I forgot about this. Uh, <laughs> they added a new uh, ability to garrison followers where it doubles the value of money rewards. Oh, um, oh, treasure hunter, and, right? Yeah, they've got Treasure Hunter in there. And so my favorite skills, there's three of them. I like Treasure Hunter. Mm -hmm. Well, I now like Treasure Hunter because gold's nice. I like Scavenger because keeping, you know, getting the double or whatever it is, garrison resources is right. really cool. Even though they nerfed it a little bit, it's still awesome. Um, and then I like Epic, uh, Epic Mount. And Which is the fast one, right? Like the half time? Yeah, half time on mission. Time. Yeah. So I went to my inn and I thought, well, I'd like to get a treasure hunter follower, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go and recruit one specifically for that. So I recruited this goblin who has both treasure hunting and scavenger on him. And I felt like I won the friggin' follower <laughs> lottery. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is the best day ever. And then I completed the part of the garrison chain where you get a follower, uh, and then she had the treasure hunter on skill on her too. And I was like, "Oh, this is the best! I'm the luckiest when it comes to followers." So uh, yeah, I was really excited about that. I'm the luckiest boy there is. Nice. <laughs> yeah, my followers are awesome. I've always said my followers way better at the game than me. It's uh, <laughs> true in my real life. It's true in my garrison. Uh, yeah, mine leveled up so much faster than I did. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. They're eye level. They just make fun of me now. They do, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what's actually happening on all of my alts. All their followers are hitting a hundred, and I'm actually gearing them up, and I'm just kind of sitting there like, okay. Just keep pretending you have a real strategic mind, Ben. Oh yeah, there we go. I think yeah, my uh, my level ninety three monk has like four armor shoulder pieces that I just need to right click, and then I can make arm armor but I need to be level 100 in order to do it. So I'm like, just kind of sitting there. I'm like, well, it's in my bank. So, you know, eventually. Yeah. You'll, you'll get there, Ben. Yeah, I will. So, uh, so yeah. Ben, what, what are your thoughts on 6.1? You're the positive guy. <laughs> You're the guy who likes everything. I really am. And I, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of sitting here. I'm like, eh. I mean, granted, I haven't done nearly as much as I could have because I've been hunting pets this entire time. If I've been logged in, I'd be I, I'm either in raid or in an old school raid hunting pets. So I don't know. I haven't experienced too much. I will say though that I absolutely love the blood elf models. They're they're nice. They're you know articulate. They have fingers now that like move and stuff. It's it's great. So, you know, we finally caught up with the rest of the game. So, yay for that. <laughs> but, um, like, you know, I, I like my face. I think it looks good. Well, my Blood Elf's face, I should say, not mine. <laughs> um, you know, th th there's just, you know, higher polygon count. So, they look good. Their, their motion works. Their laugh looks cooler. Doesn't sound cooler, but it looks cooler. Um, the dance is more dynamic. I mean, it it's... It's this feeling that everybody else got once, you know, 6.0 hit. So, go Blood Elves, finally. Of course, my Garrison Guards are still going to be Pandaren because I like them better. But, mm -hmm. go Blood Elves. <laughs> um, the new pets are cool. I like them. You know, the, if it wasn't for the the race to the finish with Eludra, I would still be going for them anyway because, you know, I'm a big pet collector and they're really neat looking. Plus, you know, like John said old school content is something I absolutely love doing. So having a lot of fun with that. Mm -hmm. um, as for the garrison stuff, I need to get the jukebox because I know that's something that I'm going to actually really like uh, going and hunting all the pieces down and the music and everything like that. Cause you know, big soundtrack guy, but okay. Maybe you guys can help me with this because I've had uh, high Lord Sarfang in my garrison and no one else this entire week so far. So, you know, I got that Bracken, uh, Bracken Spore quest that we were talking about before on, I think it was actually on Tuesday. And then I just got dailies from him the rest of the time. So I haven't really cared about, you know, going in, trying to see if I have a vendor or Harrison Jones or anyone else who can actually pop up in there. 
yeah, I've got Harrison Jones today, and it's really just like, hey, want to trade some, you know, uh, sumptuous fur for some garrison resources, things like that. I think. And then you look at him, and you're like, are you hitting on me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got some garrison resources. If you have got some of that fur, right? Sumptuous exactly. fur. Sumptuous Ooh. fur. He's making a shag carpet for his hut. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's making yeah. uh making a uh a fur coat for Felista Clockhart. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. no, I want that in game now too. <laughs> Actually, no kidding. As I said that I'm like, wow, that would be a great NPC. <laughs> oh, perfect. Felista she's it sounds like a mechanical a like like a mech gnome. Right. Robot. Totally does. Clockhart, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he finds her on one of his archae- uh, archaeological digs. And then puts and a then wig on her. falls in love. Perfect. Gnome, <laughs> a little gnome artifact. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be great. And then he saves a guy who's lost in the wilderness by finding him in a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Totally. Nice. Um, so... You know, a couple uh, UI improvements in the garrison. I mean, I know this is boring stuff, but it's great. It let me get rid of an add-on. Um, I used to use Bulky all the time to, you know, do all my work orders at once. All of a sudden, it's in the UI. I'm all, buy add-on. So whoever wrote right. that, thank you so much for the, like, you know, month that I used it. And I'm sorry <laughs> that you're completely obsolete now. Right. So, yeah. But um, other than that, uh, yeah, heirloom tab. I had uh, kind of a similar situation with John. I totally didn't know where any of my cloth heirlooms were. And then I remembered that I leveled up uh, to get a pet on a different realm and logged into her. Then, boom, had the chauffeur. So I was happy with that. Um, I integrated with Twitter because, you know, why not? It'll happen at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm tempted to do one of the show twitters and just start tweeting stuff but then again john would probably kill me mm-hmm. You're, yep absolutely <laughs> confirm when we dropped to five followers i'd be like this is what you did <laughs> some people just want to, want to watch the world burn i feel bad i did have to mute someone on twitter oh because they were they were uh posting too many selfies yeah it was just too many i'm gonna give it a little bit I'm gonna Wasn't there some achievement them. though, right? Isn't there like field photographer or something like that that you get if you go to a bunch of different... Di- oh, I guess that's just the selfie stick, right? Yeah, but it, so you don't have to tweet them. Um, like, I think you can get credit if you just take the picture, which it just saves it to your directory. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to necessarily... It doesn't auto-post anything to your Twitter feed. Mm-hmm. So gotcha. you have to actually elect to put that up. So I think you can just go, because I've been taking them all day. I've been like, this is me with uh, the war chief. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, people would be dropping off my feed left and right if I posted all of them, because I think it's dumb, and it's exactly my kind of dumb. So uh, I'm way into it. And, uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I think people, if you're out there and you're spamming Twitter like crazy, go for it. Don't let me tell you what to do with your own Twitter account. I'll stop listening to you. I just, there was a certain point where I was just like, I need to go ahead and stop this for at least a little while till the novelty wears off, and then maybe we can look into unmuting. Yeah. <laughs> Some people idea. were really excited. We'll just say that. Yeah. I don't know, and you get that from a garrison quest, right? Yeah, it's one of your garrison missions. I got mine today. It It just popped mm-hmm. up, so... Just keep an eye out for it, I guess. Okay, cool. Yeah, mine hasn't shown up yet, and I'm still just randomly getting, um, you know, Apexus crystals, because why not? And, you know, garrison resources, because I need them. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, I have a ton of XP quests that I do not need anymore, and it's it's kind of annoying. Like, I'm wasting garrison resources just to clear them out so I get new quests. Mm-hmm. I mean, is there anything mm-hmm. else that we can do with those? Not really. I mean, if you have a salvage yard, at least you get something for doing them. But it's it's one of those things where it's it's kind of frustrating. And this patch, I will say, if I'm going to levy one big criticism on this patch, beyond the obvious, like, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we had more content? I would say that it looks like they made an effort to try and put a little more variety into what we can do mission-wise. 
I don't think they did nearly enough. I think Garrison's is a cool thing. I think people are into it. It's already proven that people want to participate in it. There really needs to be more stuff that they put in there. Put more items to give us rep, because getting your rep up with the the Warlords factions is a pain in the butt. Yes. Give us more ways to get rep. Yeah. Uh, give us ways to get rep for old factions. Give us currency for old factions. I just went to uh, the Argent Tournament Grounds because there's a music track that you can buy from them. And I was like, oh, I need to get 25 of these seals. Well, I don't feel like going through jousting again. It'd be cool if they just <laughs> dropped those for garrison missions. If people don't want them, they don't have to do the quest. And if they do want them, like, that's a cool way to kind of get these old currencies. And they did it with the, the Hala tokens. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, where you can basically, yeah, and go get the mounts. And I thought that was a really cool thing. Whoever came up with the idea for putting that mission in there, that's awesome. I just don't think they went far enough with it. I think there needs to be a ton of variety where it's exciting every day to log in and see what's mm -hmm. there. Uh, yeah. As it currently stands, it's only exciting, you know, maybe once or twice a week. Yeah. So, Brian, before 6.1 happened and you, you know, went all pet crazy and everything, what were you <laughs> yes. doing daily? Uh, I was logging into the garrison. I was sending people out on missions, and I was logging out. <laughs> so Facebook, and, okay. Uh, yeah, basically uh, Clash of Clans is what I was doing. <laughs> um, the occasional, you know, run a daily or run LFR, um, but really it was like, all right, let's go through the garrison. Let's let's take all those crates that I've gotten from garrison missions and take those over to the salvage yard, open those up. Great. A lot of crap. Take that over to the enchanters study, break those down into dust, turn the dust into gems. Uh, you know, it was basically like this little, this little circle I would do like going through my garrison. All right, collect these now trade these for these now do this. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's some new stuff in there and, and the new quests, you know, even if they are, simple like all right go collect a bunch of stuff for the jukebox at least it's something new and it's something that's going to get me to um to do something different and i guess now there's going to be quests for the um uh for the pet battles like there was for fishing and uh so that'll be nice i'll have some stuff there to do yeah that's true you haven't actually experienced the fact that there's a daily quest there for them <clears throat> Which no. it, it's really nice, and even more so, there's a traveling pet tamer who will randomly show up in your garrison, and so there will be a second one there sometimes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And the neat thing about oh, that I've is, seen that uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, a Torin lady, and yep. if you if you talk to her, and you win, and you get a little bag, sometimes it has another pet in there. In fact, I was Ooh. lucky enough that the first one that I opened, I got the bone serpent. So yay. Oh, cool! Yeah, she's in my garrison. Uh, well, she was, she was earlier today. So hopefully, she's still in there. Hopefully, she doesn't uh, disappear if you don't do anything with her right away. She's like, oh, he didn't want to talk to me. Screw you! I'm out. I here. know exactly. <laughs> he did all his pet leveling, and now he doesn't want to fight me. Fine, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'll take my bone serpent elsewhere. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Wait, what? No. <laughs> you said it. That, that that's true. That is what I got. Was her bone serpent? Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, yeah, so 6.1, it, it's just kind of underwhelming for me. I mean, John, I'm happy that you love it. And Brian, I'm glad that you're into pet battling and everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I just, I I still think that it's been kind of rushed. You know, like they gave us Blackrock Foundry. Like if they had included that into this patch, I think there would have been more content to it. Like we still wouldn't be doing it. But it would feel more complete to me because I, I who was it who was saying in raid last night that um, you know every patch before this was you know something really cool like the, you know the rise of the Zandalari or the Isle right. of Thunder or something and this is the Garrison patch. <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying, Ben, but I do I do have an issue because I've heard a lot of people say that like oh I don't know why they didn't just put Blackrock in with this one. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Like, okay, that means we would have the same content to work on right now that we that we do, that we are. A week ago, yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't totally change the I... circumstance of what we have. And I know it gives the illusion of there was more in the patch, but that's all it is, an illusion. And I, to me, like, if there's content in the game, there's content in the game. It doesn't matter if they said, well, here's a big box with all True. this content, or 
here's a box with this content, and then a little later, well, here's a tinier box, you end up in the same place. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it didn't have that big epic feel of, you know, big cinematic, and here's the cool thing leading up to it. And I, I do see kind of wanting that and kind of wanting to see it, but the truth is we're not in any different place than we would have been had they included that. Now, oh, I know. If you, and, if you want to say that the cutting of the, the Daily Quest Hub that they were going to do... Like, that is a cut. That is content that was going to be there that now is not there. Uh, but, uh, you know, BlackRock Foundry, we still have it. We can still run it. We're not even there yet, actually. Sometimes your present's going to have a pony in it. Sometimes it's going to have a nice <laughs> pair of socks. But it's something that you didn't have before. So be happy. <laughs> well, it, it, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying <laughs> the illusion of more is something that Blizzard has kind of banked on for a really long time. You know, um, look at the Timeless Isle. I'm, I'm sorry, I still do not like that content very much. It's the illusion of a lot to do. But all it is is just grind the crap out of that island, and then you get a couple things. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas with this, in all honesty, I think 6.1 has more in it than the Timeless Isle does. I know that it came at the same time as Siege of Orgrimmar, so there's, you know, a whole lot there as well. But just for the amount of stuff that we got with that this one's better but at mm -hmm. the same time again it's the illusion of more that i think that blizzard kind of failed on here they definitely didn't sell it as we're giving you a whole bunch of stuff um i i will definitely agree with with that and i've also heard people say well what if they didn't call it 6.1 what if they called it 6.0 eight or nine or whatever and I, I think that's also an interesting take on it but I will I will tell you the same thing that I told Ro when he, he mentioned that uh, then the question immediately becomes okay well when are we getting 6.1 like mm -hmm. it's one of those things we always have a tendency to look ahead towards what is the next content and you know I'm I just caught myself today like man I wonder what's coming for 6.2 that we don't know about like <laughs> I hope it's something cool, but I also, like, right after they announced Warlords, I was like, man, I wonder what the expansion after this will be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it, it makes sense to look ahead and, and want to see what the content's going to be. Um, I think we, I think if they are considering this patch as a, you know, all right, we gave them that patch, we bought ourselves another three months before we have to release anything, <laughs> that, it, that might that happen. That issue, yeah. But that might be a problem because this is not a very robust patch. So I would definitely like to see something a little sooner than later come out that maybe offers a little more to the Warlord story. But mm -hmm. I think it's a I think it's a pretty decent start. So really, Ben's just hoping that that you know Blizzard was going to come out and say, "All right, guys, we got this patch out. We're going to keep going." <laughs> <laughs> That that is that's it exactly. I mean, we're not done. They know World how to speak Warcraft. to me. We're not keep going. Exactly, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> oh, poor guys. Ben. You know we're gonna say that after every boss from now on. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty Just, much. It's gonna be the war cry of the down boss. All right, guys, that was a we're great job. Yeah. Uh, everybody, stick around. We're gonna keep going. All right. We're not done. Yeah. I know we've been here five minutes, but we're gonna we're gonna keep progressing tonight. Just watch next week. I'm like, okay, guys, that's it for the night. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just what? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you know, we don't know what's happening. This is the responsibility of the raid leader, or one of them, I should say. We try to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Communications <laughs> going across the board. Make sure um, everybody knows that we have not <laughs> reached the stop time. So we will continue to progress forward. Yes, exactly. That's what happens. Yes. And I mean, to be fair, I dropped out after an hour, so clearly I could have used at least one more reminder. I really should have done it before you left. I really should yeah. have. Yeah, like, all right, guys, I got to go. What? No, John, we're going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, we still have ways. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um... In all honesty, though, this is just, just one more question for you guys, because I'm curious what you think. With the amount of content that they put in, with you know what type of content that they put in for 6.1, do you think that this is just a new direction for Blizzard of we're just 
throwing stuff at people as it kind of becomes ready? Or do you, or, well, essentially, do you think like the days of big patches, big, huge, epic sounding things for every patch are over? Like, you know, 6.2 might have something cool, but 6.3 is just kind of like a bunch of random stuff and, mm. and everything like that. Like, are they breaking their, their process with this? If, if that is the case, I'm completely and totally fine with that. I don't mind, you know, I don't mind more frequent uh, patches that add little bits and, and, and dribs and drabs, but, um, and then have bigger ones that, you know, that are scattered in throughout that. Um, so I'm totally fine with that. And if that is the direction that they're going, yeah, cool. You know, better than, better than, uh, you know, waiting three months and saying, all right, we've got this new patch. There's this new island that you'll be able to go and check out that's got all this stuff. And um, we've also added Twitter and also added this, which we actually have had built and tested and, and golden master for months now. We just wanted to wait until we had a big patch. Totally fine with them releasing stuff as it's done, as it's um as it's uh, completed its QA. True. Yeah, I think this is a uh, an indicator that Blizzard is wanting to stick to a timetable for their content. You know, and I think it's them looking at what they want to put out and say, okay, this chunk was not ready for it. We mm -hmm. can either go for a big chunk of time without content, or we can release what we have. And they opted to release what they have. And ultimately, if it was a case of get this content now or give it another couple months and then get more content later, I, honestly, I prefer this. Like, I think this is better. And what I would hope, honestly, is rather than them say, okay, well, let's push that to our next planned release, I'd actually say once that content's done, I'd love to see them release it. Like, I'm kind of with Brian. Like, I would, I would almost like to see more frequent patches, even if it doesn't contain a whole bunch of stuff. So, essentially, you would prefer, like... 10 patches for the cycle of warlords as opposed to the what four or five that we got for uh, Pandaria just because it, it it'll possibly spread out all the content so it's uh, being created more often and given to us more freely than you know it's like okay well here's the patch now wait a year before warlords of Draenor comes out yeah I think a lot of it depends on release schedule too I mean I think and what the content is. Uh, if you release something that is, say, a daily hub, which it sounds like might be one of the things we're going to get in the future, if that is the only thing you put out, then that daily hub needs to support the fact that all of your current player base is going to go there because it is mm -hmm. the only thing that's mm -hmm. there in that right. patch. It's the one addition, so don't <laughs> make that daily hub break uh, yeah. from server overload. Yeah. So it, you know, I think that's something to also think about if it's a if it's a matter of, all right, well, we can put it out here and it'll be the only thing, and it's probably going to crash and be a nightmare to try and get through, or we can put it in with all this other cool stuff that'll hopefully divide the player base a little bit. Like then, I think that's the smarter decision, and it, it sounds like that's the decisions that Blizzard is making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? I'm okay with that. I really am. Mm -hmm. As much mm -hmm. as I'm going to poo-poo this patch. I'm, in all honesty, after everything's said and done, I'm happy that they did add more content into the game. And once I get all 12 of my pets and beat Aludra, then I'm going to be experiencing a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got well, seven characters I could run through all that stuff, so it's, it's going to be this week. I don't care. I want to also point out, I think it's funny that everybody has referred to this as the Garrison Patch. And I have spent less time in my garrison now with this patch than I had previously, mm -hmm. uh, which is an interesting uh, idea and an interesting dynamic. And it actually makes me really happy because I know that one of the biggest Warlord's criticisms is, hey, you spend perhaps too much time just sitting in your garrison. <laughs> so yeah, them but finding... What but what you've been doing is running around the world getting things to listen to in your garrison. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, that when I have... do have to go back to just staying in my garrison, <laughs> it's going to sound awesome. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, John, you always wanted your garrison in Grizzly Hills or Howling Fjord. So you just put the music on, you close your eyes, and just sit down and, and like you sit in the snow because it's like, hey, I'm, I'm in Northrend. It's cold. And <laughs> yeah, <aw>. exactly. <laughs> I just pretend I just pretend I get to put my garrison where I wanted it. That's awesome. 
Yeah. All right. Well, um, with that, I think that's about it. Do uh, you guys have anything else to say about 6.1? Hmm. No, looking forward to going and getting some more pets. Crazy. Right. I can't believe I'm saying that. I am so happy I you are, though. might have convinced me that I need to build my menagerie. Yeah. I'm sick of seeing that stupid question mark. Yes. Oh, man, me too. Yeah, just go <laughs> go get your arcane eyes. Like, get some mechanicals. Go to arcane, get the arcane eyes around Karazhan. Go get some blizzard hatchlings around Dragon Blight. Uh, blizzard, buzzard. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> hatchlings. Uh, go to... Uh, I can't remember the next step. It's in that guide. You'll find a guide online. Super easy. Very cool. Thank you for that. Um, well, with that, let's go ahead and uh, listen to, to some Celebrity Murloc Theater. Celebrity Murloc Theater. So, John... That's a bumper right there. Yes, it is, <laughs> because you made it, right? <laughs> Darn right I made it. <laughs> well, since you made the bumper, why don't you explain what Celebrity Murloc Theater is? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Celebrity <laughs> Murloc Theater. I'm John Jagger of Azeroth Roundtable. I want to take a moment from my busy schedule to let you know just what is Celebrity Murloc Theater and how you can participate. So... As you know, we like to hear people make fools of themselves. We do it every week ourselves. Yes, we do. So what we ask is that you send us audio submissions. And what we want these audio submissions to be is either you doing an impression of a murloc, like what Ben's going to demonstrate right here. <laughs> Perfect. Or you doing the voice of a celebrity doing a murloc, like Ben's going to demonstrate for us right now. I thought you were going to make Brian do it. I thought about it, and then I thought it would be more fun to throw you under the bus. <laughs> Thanks. Brian uh, could do it really well. You're going to yeah, struggle with it. so I really am. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Brian, do you want to bail him out? Uh, <clears throat> God, I have nothing prepared. I was trying to think, what would a uh, Christopher Walken Murloc sound like? Whoa, 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 whoa. Perfect. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Just like that. The final option is to go ahead and take something that already exists in real life, like a clip from a movie or a song or a TV show, and go ahead and edit in a murloc where you feel it's appropriate. It can be you being a murloc. It could be Blizzard's audio file of a murloc, as long as it's funny. And uh, please keep the submissions a little on the shorter side. Yep, the reason we say that is because Ro likes to go kind of long in his submissions, which is okay, um, except it, it tends to get a little long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we do Not have that a... we're going to call anyone out, but Ro! <laughs> <laughs> well, just as an example, because he's, he's submitted a whole lot, and sometimes, uh, you know, they're quick ones, sometimes they're long ones. Um, you know, if, if you have a whole song, great. We might have to cut some of it out to kind of play it to give a good example. Um, just to say that, we're going to start kind of trimming these down a little bit. Um and with that being said, this week we have a submission from Memnith. So thank you very much for your submission. Just to let you guys know, it is a little long. Um, so from after I'm done playing his to the future, um, cut them down just a little bit. Keep them about maybe a minute tops. Would you say that's good, John? I think that sounds good. All right. Well, with that being said, uh, let's find out what happened to Memnith at work. Hello. This is Mementh from Mercast Cable Company. How can I help you today? Okay, sir. I understand you need to talk about your bill and the pay-per-view charges on your bill. I see some adult movies ordered. That seems to be the reason your bill is higher than normal. Sir, I understand you say you did not order these. Could there be a young murloc in the home? <coughs> well, your son ordered six hours of fishbone. 
12 carp I would eat, 18 and spawning, 2 fish, 1 bowl, and 50 skillets of cooking. Sir, with those last two movies, your son is into some seriously kinky carp. <laughs> Sir, don't worry. We will put a lock on the adult movies and credit those off your bill. Take care and thank you for calling Burcast, home of the Triple Lock Mergle Entertainment System. You know, I really didn't think that you could, you know, record customer service calls and like bring them home. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, we thank you that you put your job at risk by bringing this recording of your day to day life uh, and playing it. Is Hopefully. there one where Veronica and Ryan call in and, and try and have their Murloc service canceled? <laughs> There's a possibility of that. Uh, it, that's, that's a longer call, about 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, or so. Oh, yeah. Let's not give anybody any ideas. <laughs> so, uh, Mehmet, thank you very much for your call. And how you got that demonic Murloc in there, I have no idea. Ooh. Yeah, some of those were terrifying. I'm kind of back to being afraid of Murlocs. We nearly <laughs> dropped the segment because I was like, they're not. They're terrifying now. Um, so. Ben, let's mention why it's so important, why we're pushing Celebrity Murloc Theater quite so much. Well, we are pushing it. Just in case somebody doesn't know. We're pushing it incredibly much this year in particular because every single episode that has a submission of Celebrity Murloc Theater, I will be donating $2. John will be donating $2. Ro is donating $2. Jocelyn is donating $2. As well as some awesome listeners who are as well. I said as well twice. Whatever. The message mm-hmm. is still there. That's what matters. <laughs> so where are we donating all this money, John? To Child's Play. Uh, we are going to total up the amount for the year when we get to the end of the year. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give a big lump sum to Child's Play charities, uh, all because you people uh, you know, made a fool of yourself by impersonating Murlocs on our show. Yes, and helping us out with that. Um, in all honesty, we want to hear them. Send them in because they're a lot of fun for us as well as for the kids, guys. For the kids. Do it for the kids. Yeah. For the kids. Will somebody please think of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mrs. Lovejoy. <laughs> hey, John, guess what? What, Ben? We got a five-star review. That's our favorite kind of review. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, what do you want me to say? That's great. I don't know. Golly, that's fantastic. Yeah, this one actually came from the United Kingdom. Oh, fancy that. And what did they have to say, Ben? Uh, well, this is actually from Den HW, who said, Great Wow Podcast. He has a great American accent, by the way. This is a great show. Mm, this ben doesn't John- sound like it's coming from the UK, Ben. I'm just not feeling it. You want to maybe rewind that a little bit? Try that again? Why don't you really try to sell it for us? Yeah, uh, with a little UK flair, please. I'm so bad. <laughs> so bad. I'm just going to turn into, you know, one of the um, an 18th century, you know, kid street urchin again. That's fine. All right. This is a great show. Ben and John have a great dynamic and are really funny guys. God, that's so bad. The show usually has a third host from other podcasts, and they discuss a different WoW-related topic each episode. It's like listening to your mates chat about WoW and make jokes. I hate you, John. What was that? I don't know. (laughs) That was uh, Jennifer Jason Leigh's uh, uh, (laughs) accent from the Hudsucker Proxy, wasn't it? (laughs) Exactly. Yes, that's what I was... (laughs) That's what she I was, was a Muncie girl. <laughs> Perfect, Ben. You nailed it. Thanks a lot, Ro. He said uh, that was terrible, and I should feel terrible. Yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> oh, you know, Brian, you've been raiding with uh, John and I for what almost uh, a year and a half, two years now, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I bet you that uh, that uh, you didn't know that one of John's favorite things in the world to do is to wear a T-shirt. Really? You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> yeah, he, Tell he me doesn't. More. He doesn't say a whole ton about it during raid, but out of raid, by golly, he talks about T-shirts left and right all the time. Just, just any T-shirt, or are there specific T-shirts that he likes? John, can you answer that? Well. You know, it's difficult choosing a t-shirt. It's one of life's greater challenges. You want something that's going to be comfortable. You want something that's going to be stylish. You want something that's going to avoid the ridicule and criticism of your peers. And you want something that's going to be aesthetically pleasing. You also want to make sure that you promote products you enjoy. And what kind of shirt would (laughs) fill all of those requirements, John? Well, I mean, this is crazy, but it would have to be some sort of Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt with our logo on it. And that's really the only thing I can imagine fitting all that criteria. Well, did you know that you can actually get an Azeroth Roundtable with logo on a t-shirt at slash loot.com? That sounds like blasphemy, and you should feel bad for saying it. No, it's true. Go to slash loot.com, click on podcasts, and look for the Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt where you can purchase it for your very own. That sounds like an amazing experience. I will do that now. Good. Right now. I, I could use that. Goodbye. Do Goodbye. it today. <laughs> Such a better accent. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> Well, guys, we're going to keep this going. So <laughs> uh, if you are interested in uh, more merchandise from us, you can always go to geekasylum.etsy.com. I can't talk anymore. It's the end of the show. It happens every single you time. You know, the got comms. Yeah. The, I got comms. When the, comms. Internet, when the internet split off and created a whole new version of itself yeah. during the got com boom. <laughs> yeah, so geekasylum.etsy.com. Uh, you can find a necklace with the Azeroth Roundtable logo on it with art. Our Murloc with the mic. And also, it's available in keychain form as well. That's exciting. My keys can now look as fancy as my neck and chest. <laughs> and you do have a fancy <laughs> chest, John. <laughs> Thank you. It's all thanks to those wonderful fellows at AzerothRoundtable.com. So, Brian, thank you very much for joining us this week. And I've got to ask, how can people find you? People can find me by by basically adding slash Coverville to the end of everything on the Internet. <laughs> so if you go to uh, Twitter.com slash Coverville, Facebook.com slash Coverville, uh, uh, maybe MySpace, I don't know, Friendster? Is that still a thing? Uh, Angel Cities? What was that thing? Geo Angel Cities. Fire? Uh, <laughs> Geo Cities, Angel, whatever. Uh, you can also so uh, Coverville's the uh, music show I do every Tuesday at two p.m. Mountain. It's all cover songs. If you didn't get that by the by the name, the morning stream Monday through Thursday in the a.m. and then Thursday in the p.m. as well. You find that over at Frog Pants as well as film movie podcast that I'm on. And uh, if you can't get enough of Garrison's and wish there was a way to <laughs> do all that sort of Garrison thing you do, but do with Marvel superheroes, then you should check out Marvel Avengers Alliance on Facebook. And as you do that, you can listen to uh, another show I'm part of called From the helicarrier which um talks all about that uh that superhero game on facebook and ios hey john how about you how can people find you i'm around okay they'll, they'll find me they know where to look okay. but if they need a little direction you can follow me on twitter at, i'm at <laughs> i was say we need that little name part there yeah they don't really need to know it's it's about to be nothing but blood elf selfies, so it's probably best <laughs> they just stay away. Wait a week or two? Yeah, give it a couple weeks, then follow me on Twitter, uh, at Revendon. That works. <laughs> AngelCities.com, that's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter. I am at Al the Mage. I also do a show called Geektopia. Uh, we're going to be recording tomorrow night and talking about Legos. 
because they're awesome. Um, cool. Also, the aforementioned Battle Pets with Eludra, I'm on that as well. Uh, as for this show, you can follow us on Twitter. We are at AzrothRT. You can find uh, past episodes as well as this one, which you're listening to right now, on mm-hmm. AzrothRoundTable.com, also on iTunes and Stitcher. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, you want to send in a Celebrity Murloc Theater, or you just want to complain about how horrible my accents are, you can send those emails to AzrothRoundTable at gmail.com. And uh, make sure you always uh, check out tunein.alphageekradio.com where you can find us playing as well as many other wonderful podcasts. And of course, last but not least, our intro contains music from Volatile Reaction by Kevin McLeod. You can find more of his music at incompetech.com. You did it. I did. I didn't actually completely screw that up. No, it was, there were only some minor little misses. It was fine. I'm working on it. It's passable. Thank you. <laughs> I give you a grade of passable. Good. So, Brian, I've got to ask, because I haven't in a while, are you still playing 